In today's game, we see Bobby Fischer take on a player who's known to be hard to beat, Petar Trifunovic, a grandmaster who was an excellent endgame player and made things very hard for his opponent. He did not always win, but he was very hard to defeat. Let's see how Fischer handles a player like this, someone the other grandmasters couldn't beat. Can Fischer do so? Let us jump right in. Fischer has white, Trifunovic has black. Fischer begins with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. And of course, the Rui Lopez is played by Bobby. A6, we're not going to play a Berlin today. He kicks that bishop and says either take the knight or move back. Fischer plays bishop to a4. Knight to f6. And of course, this move directly attacks the e4 pawn. Fischer castles, and usually black will play a move like b5 here. But here, uh, Trifunovic takes the pawn at e4. This is known as the open Spanish, where you're opening the center of the board very quickly. Uh, and uh, forcing white to try to take advantage of that situation, because if you don't, you're going to be down material, and uh, black's going to have a decent position. Um, the move rook to e1 comes immediately to mind, right? Hitting the knight, aiming at the king. The problem is, after knight to c5, black has a really good position. That hits that bishop. If you take on c6, you take with the d-pawn, and black has the bishop pair, and these pawn weaknesses on the queen side are not a problem, because... Uh, White's four pawns are on the queen's side instead of on the king's side, like in an exchange variation uh, of the Spanish. So uh, White does not usually do that. Instead, Fisher plays d4, trying to pry open this e-file and put the king in even more danger. Um, if pawn takes pawn, White gets a strong position. Rook to e1, of course, that pins the knight to the king. d5, trying to defend that knight. But then just knight to d4, and uh, black is under a lot of pressure here. If he tries bishop to d6 to create some tactics against the h2 pawn, a really cool variation here. White can take on c6, then bishop to h2 check. Now, if white takes that bishop, then black gets a draw. With queen to h4 check, king g1, queen to f2 check. The knight defends the queen, and you just go back and forth. However, in order to get a better position, white plays king to h1. And uh, there's no fork here because, again, the knight is pinned. And queen to h4, it looks like black is winning. But uh, white has a very nice move here. Rook takes knight check. If the queen takes the rook, then the king would just take the bishop at h2. So pawn takes rook, and here's the, the shot. White plays queen to d8 check, getting those queens off the board. And now in this position, black has a rook and two pawns, but white has the bishop pair all kinds of targets, and a king stuck in the middle of the board. White is better there. So because of that, instead of taking on d4, b5 is played by Trifunovic, bishop b3, and the main move by far here is d5, uh, securing that knight in the middle of the board, but it, he goes ahead and takes on d4 here. Rook to e1, hits the knight, now d5. Bobby's next move looks like a, an optical illusion when you first see it. He plays the move knight to c3. Now, this knight looks like it can be captured either by the knight or the pawn. Well, it can't be captured by the knight because the knight is pinned, but why not the pawn? Well, if the pawn takes the knight, then this move, bishop to d5, undermining this knight, now the, is pinning the knight at c6 to the rook, now this knight is going to be lost, and uh, white is just winning uh, in that position. So after knight to c3, Trifunovic plays bishop to e6, defending that d5 pawn. But then knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, rook takes e4. Fisher regains one of those pawns, and he also has pressure on this e6 bishop, which is going to become an important issue. After bishop to e7, he goes ahead and takes on e6, and now he's created an isolated pawn to work on. Now he takes on d4. So Fisher has the a6 b5 structure is a little vulnerable to attack, maybe with a move like a4, and then of course the e6 pawn is isolated. One thing to note, though, this is kind of scary, right? There's a pin on this d-file. Uh, the knight moves, queen takes queen. So can black exploit that pin? Well, if he plays e5, trying to exploit the pin, then white can play queen to h5, check, and after g6, knight takes c6. The knight attacks the queen, and the queen at h5 defends the d1 square. After pawn takes, you would see that, obviously, white has a much healthier pawn structure and is just better in that position. So instead, black castles. Now queen to g4. Steps out of the pin, but also attacks the uh, e6 pawn a third time. 
Knight takes d4, rook takes d4, which hits the queen. Queen to c8 helps to defend that pawn, but now rook to e4, and we see Fisher building pressure on that e-pawn weakness. Rook to f6 to defend, bishop to e3, that bishop can go to, to d4, and maybe put some pressure on this diagonal aiming towards g7. Queen to d7, and now rook to d1. Notice the queen defends that rook, which gains a tempo against the queen at d7. Queen to c6, aiming at the c2 pawn, but now bishop to d4. Hits that rook, and there's, again, x-ray pressure against this g7 pawn, so rook to g6, defends g7, hits the queen, and after Fisher plays queen to e2, he has to be a little worried about this g2 square. Uh, if this rook were to move, then uh, queen takes g2 could be a, a threat. Rook to d8 from black, but now g3. This way, Fisher he doesn't have to worry about back rank mates, and he also doesn't have to worry about that mate on g2 anymore. Queen to d5. Trifunovich sets up a very nasty threat. He's obviously he's threatening to play c5 and then winning material down this, uh, this d file. So Fisher just plays rook to e1, steps out of that pin, and adds another piece to attack on e6. c5 kicks the bishop. The bishop goes to c3. He could play b4 here, but after bishop e5, queen takes a2. Move h4 with h5 coming is actually a real problem for black, and white has a very nice attack there. So instead, he plays the rook to d6, adding a third defender to the e6 pawn. Fisher plays bishop to e5. Now, if he plays, say, rook to c6, trying to keep that rook in contact with this pawn, then rook to d1, and uh, white gets all kinds of pressure, even though the queen can take on a2. When the rook comes to d7, white's pieces are far uh, too active for black. So instead, he moves the rook back to d8 to keep control over that d file, but then bishop to f4. So now the bishop controls the d6 square and all three of these pieces aim at e6, and there's no way to add a third defender, really. I mean, I guess he could play king to f7, but what he decides to do instead, instead of that risky move, moving the king towards the center of the board, is he plays c4. So he's going to give the pawn back, but he's a very strong endgame player, and he's developed a nice uh, square for the bishop. The bishop can go to c5, aim at the king, and at f2. He feels he has enough activity to, uh, to save this position, and we know he's the drawing king. So rook takes e6, Fisher goes ahead and takes the material, a bunch of exchanges on e6, but now bishop to f6. Instead of c5, he puts the bishop anchored at f6 in the long diagonal, aiming at the b2 pawn. Rook takes a6, now rook to d1 check, king to g2. Now modern computers prefer the move rook to b1. The idea is if he's allowed to take on b2, he will be defending the pawn at b5. And after b3, rook to b2 attacks c2, Pawn takes, pawn takes, rook to f3, or king to f3, excuse me, rook takes c2. A white is still better here, however. That's important to note. His king is more active, and this past a pawn is pretty quick. But instead, Trevunovich goes ahead and takes on b2 with uh, the bishop, and he does create two isolated pawns, the a and the c files. Rook to b6, Fisher attacks the b pawn from behind, rook to a1, rook takes b5, rook takes a2, and then rook to c5. This is key. If if these two pawns get traded off, it will be pretty much impossible or very, very hard for white to win. The three versus two on one side of the board is extremely difficult and very unlikely that white can win that position. But if he can win this pawn, then Fisher has real winning chances. So rook to a4 to defend that pawn, holding it. Bishop to e5. Fisher makes an interesting decision. He basically forces the exchange of, uh, of bishops. He can't move the bishop away because then Fisher would play rook to c7 and be aiming at the g7 pawn. So he has to trade him. Usually rook ending ga end games are seen as drawish, but Fisher has seen deeper. He knows he has real chances here. Bishop takes e5, rook takes e5, rook to a2 attacking the c2 pawn, now rook to e2. He has to ma maintain that pawn and try to win this pawn on c4 for the time being. King to f7, and notice how Fisher has blocked off black's king. It can't cross over, whereas white's king can, can move. Fisher's king can become active. King to f3, king to f6, king to e4. This does not allow black over, because if he plays king to e6, then king to d4 discovered check, and uh, Fisher would win the pawn at c4. So instead, black plays g5, a common theme. The idea is maybe you can play it to g4 and have uh, create backward pawns on a2 and c2, and try to limit the mobility of a Fisher's kingside pawn majority. King to d4 goes after that pawn. King to f5 he wants to enter into g4, or maybe h3 or f3. So Fisher plays f3 to keep the king uh, out of there. 
Um, if rook to a4, c3, king to f6, king to c5, and Fisher's going to play king to b5, hit the rook and the pawn and win uh, that pawn. Um, so instead, c3 is played uh, to keep white from playing c3 himself. Um, Fisher could take here. Uh, the idea is the black hat was after he takes that he can check and win the pawn at f3. The problem is after c4, Fisher's c pawn is, is just too fast. Uh, but Fisher plays a more cautious move, playing it slow in the end game. Rook to f2 just keeps that pawn defended. Now he is threatening to take on c3. Rook to a3 defends that pawn, but now king to c4 with that same motif of king to b4 with a double attack on the rook and the pawn at c3, winning material. A black advances on the king side, king to b4 with that double attack, king moves, and king again, he could just take the pawn, but he's cautious. He plays f4, he wants to keep uh, black from playing g4 and keeping those pawn back, pawns backwards. Uh, and here, if gf4, rook f4, king e5, king c3, this would just be totally winning for, uh, for white. So Trifunovich plays king to e4. Maybe his king activity can compensate for his uh, material deficit. Fisher goes ahead and grabs on g5. King to e3 hits the rook. Rook to g2. Uh, king to f3 is possible, but uh, white's just going to be better after rook g1 and just the king gets a the rook gets active and uh, with this pass pawn it would be an easy win. So king to d4 instead. Maybe he can box in white's king and keep it from be uh, activating. He also defends the c3 pawn. Rook to e2 cuts off the king. Rook to b8 check. King a4. Rook to g8 attacking the pawn at g5, so h4 to defend it. Rook to f8 to play rook f3, rook takes g3. Rook to e7 to play rook h7, rook takes h5. Rook f3 attacking the pawn, rook d7 check. And there are some checks here. And uh, Fisher is not going to have a threefold repetition, so he plays king to b3 here. He, he wants to win, obviously, not draw. Rook takes g3, rook to d7 check, pushes the king away from the defense of this pawn. After king to e4, rook to h7. Now Fisher goes after this uh, h5 pawn. King to d4, rook takes h5, rook to g1. And here black is really hoping for a miracle. Uh, aiming, trying to play check on rook to b1. At the rook to h8, rook to b1 check. King to a4, rook to a1, king to b5. And this is the key idea. After rook to b1 check, king to c6. And now he's run away from the checks and is able to uh, go towards the king side. Rook to g1, placing the rook behind the lead pawn. When you're going battling two pawns, the rook behind the lead pawn is a right idea. Rook to d8, check. King c4, rook to e8. King to... By the way, there's a threat of mate here, by the way. So black has to be very careful. Rook to e4 would be mate. Um, so he plays king to b4 to avoid that. Now the king activates king to d5. Fisher ended up not having to win that pawn because he gets these two passers. Rook to d1 check, king to e6. You definitely don't want to play a move, sloppy move like this because a rook to e1 check obviously would in the rook. Uh, so king to e6, rook to e1, and now he's able to play king to f7, right? King is ki keep his king in contact with the rook. Uh, rook to f1, black can't exchange rooks. It'd be an easy win for white. King to g6. Now Fisher has moved his king over to the king side and he can escort uh, this h pawn forward. Rook to f2, attacking c2. He hopes that he can take on c2 and uh, advance his pawn to c1 faster than Bobby Fischer, but h5, rook takes c2, h6, rook h2, h7, c2, rook to c8. Fischer has his rook behind black's pass pawn. Black has his rook behind Fischer's pass pawn. But after king to b3, king to g7, black resigned. And here's why. Basically, these two pawns would be sacrificed for the rooks and then the pawn at the g5 would win. So, for example, the king to b2, white just promotes to a queen, rook takes queen, king takes rook, and then black promotes to a queen, then white can take the queen, king can take the rook, boom, and g6, and nothing you can do to stop the pawn from queening. So, Trifunovich fought hard, strong endgame player, but at the end, Fisher was able to use that little bit of an advantage, the weak pawn at e6, and then that material edge, to win a very nice game against Trifunovich. Hope you enjoyed the game. See you again soon at Chess Dog. Goodbye.